What dinosaur is this? Or this? Wait, wait a minute, what's that? Velocio Velociraptor. If you answered Velociraptor, then prepare to have your mind blown! What's up, Lab Squad? Bodhi here, glad to see all your smiling faces! Welcome to the Play Lab, and if you're new here and into anything dinosaurs, be sure to bite, claw, and slash that subscribe button! Today we're gonna talk about the Jurassic Park Velociraptors, more specifically, seven movie myths about Velociraptors. When it came out, Jurassic Park was probably the most scientifically accurate movie about dinosaurs. They showed us that dinosaurs weren't just slow lumbering beasts. They were the first to introduce dinosaurs as swift, active, and energetic creatures. The Jurassic Park franchise also popularized many dinosaurs. They managed to make the Velociraptor a household name. What species is this? It's a Velociraptor. In Jurassic Park, they were cold, ruthless killing machines. And in Jurassic World, they were our brave heroes. After almost 30 years though, the science behind the Velociraptors doesn't quite hold up. <coughs> the Velociraptors we see in the movies are actually quite different from real Velociraptors. Myth number one, appearance. So what did Velociraptors really look like? Thanks to new findings from our paleontologist friends, we know that Dr. Alan Grant from Jurassic Park was actually quite right when he said that dinosaurs had more in common with present day birds than they do with reptiles. And even the word raptor means bird of prey. If that's so, then why do movie velociraptors look like this? I don't know about you, but that doesn't look like any bird I've ever seen. So should velociraptors look more like this then? <laughs> very scary. More like a six foot turkey. Six foot turkey. You know what annoying kid from Jurassic Park 1? You might be onto something. The raptors from the movie are missing one important thing birds have. That's right, feathers. Fossils of Velociraptor ancestors are known to have had feathers covering their bodies and fully developed feathered wings. Some of the wings found were possibly capable of flight. If you take a look at some of the flightless birds today, you might notice that they still have feathers, which they got from their ancestors. This supports the theory that Velociraptors probably had feathers. Conclusive proof was discovered in September 2007, when researchers noticed little quill knobs on the forearm of a Velociraptor found in Mongolia. These bumps on bird wing bones show where the feathers anchor. So here's what a Velociraptor would have looked like, feathers and all. Still pretty terrifying, but a far cry from the scaly reptilian we all got used to. Myth number two, size. How big were Velociraptors? The movie Velociraptors are depicted to be a bit bigger than an adult human. Fossil records show that Velociraptor adults were only about one meter or three feet tall at the hip. A fully grown male turkey is actually about the same size as an adult velociraptor. Myth number 4. Origin. Where can we find velociraptors? In the film, Dr. Grant worked at a dig site located in the Badlands near Snakewater, Montana. Velociraptor fossils were actually discovered in the outer Mongolian Gobi Desert and have only been found in Central Asia which is pretty far from Montana. Myth number five, intelligence. How smart were Velociraptors? In Jurassic Park 3, Dr. Grant says that they were smarter than dolphins or whales. They were smarter than primates. Today, paleontologists don't really believe that. Don't get me wrong. The size of Velociraptor's brain compared to its body is pretty big compared to most reptiles, including most other dinosaurs. So it may have been a bit more clever than others. Clever girl. But saying the Velociraptor is very intelligent for a dinosaur is kind of like saying the garden snail is pretty fast for a snail. Dinosaurs are not very smart. <laughs> A real Velociraptor probably would not have been able to outsmart humans. Oh, I 
theories about raptor intelligence, what they were capable of. We weren't even close. What Jurassic Park may have gotten right was that raptors could have behaved like wolves. Since they also hunted down their prey in packs. The evidence that raptors hunted like wolves comes from bone beds. At least three raptors were found alongside the relatively large herbivore Tentosaurus at a quarry excavated by paleontologist John Ostrom. Where Tentosaurus bones were found, raptor teeth and preserved raptor footprints frequently turned up. Tackling and taking down a Tentosaurus would not have been easy for a single hunter. But just because they hunted in packs doesn't mean that they were smarter than humans though. It just goes to show that they were at least as cunning as wolves. Jumping from wolf-like intelligence to superhuman is a bit of a stretch. So velociraptors were pretty smart, but don't expect them to go around opening doors for you. Myth number six. What did they use their claw for? Could the velociraptor really slice up your belly and eat you while you are still alive? Paleontologists built a mechanical model of the claw for the BBC documentary The Truth About Killer Dinosaurs. They had a bit of trouble trying to slice up anything. Research suggests that the claw was used for stabbing and not for slashing. The claw was very pointy at the tip, but the underside was not sharp at all. Velociraptors would use their claws to pierce vital body parts like the throat. It was also used as a hook to prevent prey from escaping. Myth number seven, their sound. What did they really sound like? Thanks to Jurassic Park, you might think that Velociraptors sounded like this. Well, this is very scary. It's actually the sound of many animals put together for that Hollywood scare factor. And the Sinclair allowed the sound designers to mix voices, turning a dolphin shriek and a walrus grunt into a raptor snarl. We blended the two elements together, so I had the low frequency walrus with the high frequency. So I got the, I got the terror that I wanted from the dolphin, but I got the size that I wanted from the walrus. So to get an idea of what an actual velociraptor sounded like, let's go take a look at the heaviest living raptor today. The stellar sea eagle is the heaviest bird of prey in the world. You can find it hanging out in Siberia, Russia. Its size is comparable to a velociraptor, and it shares many characteristics with its prehistoric relatives. Maybe it even shares its voice. So why did Jurassic Park get velociraptors so wrong? Jurassic Park came out almost three decades ago. A lot of new discoveries in the dinosaur world have been made since then. Michael Crichton, the author of Jurassic Park, was looking for a scary beast for his book. And he found the Velociraptor and Theropus in the book Predatory Dinosaurs of the World by paleo artist Gregory S. Paul. Coming in at about 6 feet tall, it was the perfect size to hunt humans. It was fast. It looked scary. And it was the perfect bad guy for his book. Scientific names can change a lot over the course of 30 years. It's a velociraptor. Bad raptors. Sometimes scientists can give different names to the same dinosaur species because they weren't sure which ones they were when they found them. When Crichton wrote his book, some paleontologists weren't so sure if the Velociraptor Antheropus was actually a real Velociraptor. However, they ended up changing the name of Velociraptor Antheropus to Deinonychus instead because they found out it wasn't an actual Velociraptor. All in all, I think they got a lot of things right. I personally wouldn't want to be in the same room as a pack of hungry Velociraptors. If you learned anything new about Velociraptors, let us know in the comments below. We're really experimenting with this new type of video, so if you did like it, please share it with your friends. It'll help us know that you enjoyed the video. And remember, if you're into all things dinosaurs, be sure to bite, claw, and slash that subscribe button. See you guys in the next video. And be sure to check out our Jurassic Park T-Rex Breakout Lego video. And our awesome Lego T-Rex build.
And a big shout out to the first Lab Squad member who posted a comment on our last video.